Welcome back guys. In today's video, we are going to talk about what I feel are the eight most important skills that an IT consultant needs to have. As many of you know, uh, I've been the CTO, CEO of Zendev the past five years. And along the way, I think I've been able to narrow down what some of the most uh, important skills and traits of an IT consultant are. Skill number one, the English language. Of course, if you're a native English speaker, this is completely irrelevant for you, but for everybody else, if you aren't comfortable with both spoken and written English, I suggest you start put, putting in the hours right away because it's the only skill that you know 100% will give you dividend on your investment, the English language. You will have an easier time communicating with your clients. You will have an easier time taking in information in all formats that's online. And whether we like to admit it or not, when we speak to international clients, depending on if we're fluent in English or not, the perception of us changes. Invest in the language, uh, download apps, go to international cafes, whether they be online or offline. Just try to speak as much English as you can and I promise you won't regret the investment. I always say that in our company, I value English and communication skills as highly as I value all of your technical skills combined. Keep that in mind. Skill number two, communicate on the right technical level. So if we can already assume that you know how to speak in English at this point, the next point is to try to com communicate with the potential client or your manager or whoever in such a way that they can interpret the information that you're giving them. So if you're a developer, for example, think about who it is that you're speaking to and adjust your language accordingly. Don't use a bunch of buzzwords and acronyms if you aren't 100% sure that the person you're talking to is actually going to understand them. Um, I promise you, it won't make you sound smarter. It will only frustrate the person that you're talking to. If you're talking to a client that isn't tech savvy, then speak on a level of tech that they understand. So also while you're speaking, try to be observant if they're catching what you're actually talking about and ask if they understand what you mean. And if, if they don't, bring it down another level. Skill number three, be a problem solver, not a problem creator. So whenever you leave a meeting in your company, your aim should be that the next time you guys meet up, you've done one of two things. You've either A, solve the problem, or B, move towards the common goal. The last thing you want to be is the kind of person that every time you come into a meeting, you present three new problems without any suggestions for how to solve them. Remember, your job as a consultant is not to outsource your problems to the rest of the team. You need to be a part of the solving process. If you're not sure what to do, think it through and suggest a few alternatives. It's much easier for your team to take stance on a few different alternatives than to try to deepen themselves into your problem and create a solution for you. Skill number four, be technically skilled and up to date. And this is, if you're a consultant, something that of course goes without saying, you need to stay on top of your skills, no matter what they are, whether they be DevOps, programming, UX, UI. Nevertheless, always stay on top of them by reading the latest blogs, you know, reading books, follow the progression of the different frameworks. Don't let time make your skills outdated. Skill number five, be a good listener. Only speak as much as you need to speak. When you first start talking to your client, have them draw up a vision of what they believe that the end goal should be. And then ask the proper questions to verify that they really understand their needs properly. Remember the first class in software engineering, the client doesn't always know what they want. So help them through this process. Once you've agreed on a destination for the client, you probably already in your mind have some sort of idea how to get to that destination, but you probably also have some gaps along the way that you aren't quite sure how to get there. And these are the questions that you need to ask to fill in the gaps so that you have a clear path to the end goal. You might not know those questions in that specific moment, so maybe you have to go back to the drawing board and figure things out and have a new set of questions for the next meeting. And then you just repeat that process over and over again. Listen to the answers and again, only talk as much as you need to talk. This doesn't mean that you should be a robot. When it's time for humor, humor and general bonding with the client, feel free to be relaxed with the client. It's good for the overall relationship. It's more fun for everybody involved. But just make sure that when you're taking instructions, that's when you need to be focused. Skill number six, be organized. And this is one of my weaker points personally, but I really appreciate this skill amongst my colleagues. 
before you even start developing, make sure that you together with the client clearly define what the scope of the project is. And when you define the scope, then make sure to draw out all the different visuals that you have. And you can draw them out, uh, up in Figma or Adobe XD or some similar tool. And then look at those drawings together with your client to agree that whatever is in those drawings, that's what your initial application should be. And only once you've agreed on that should any development take place. Whether you're working in a Scrum or Kanban methodology, it's not really important. What's important is that as you go through the process, you update your tickets properly, you document the code that you're writing. Uh, at the end of the day, you make sure to record all the hours that you put in. If you have something that's important for your colleagues to know, then make sure to communicate with them. Just stay on top of things and be organized. Skill number seven, be dependable. And you know, this is coming in as rule number seven but in some sense this might be the single most important rule in this entire list because you just want to make a feeling amongst your teammates and amongst your managers and amongst your clients that you're the kind of person that when somebody puts something on your table they will feel confident that you will actually complete that task whatever it is when you work with people for some time you get a feel for who the people are that you feel that you can trust that when you put something on their table they're actually going to deliver on that and these are also usually the people that climb the fastest in their careers because managers and founders they love people that take full responsibility for whatever their task is and what they often also do these people is that they uh, deliver above expectations and it goes between your peers as well if you're in a team the person next to you has to feel that you're going to pull your part as well i mean the teams that work the best have full trust in each other skill number eight be a team player if you're working in a company that has any kind of healthy culture within it being a team player should do you good think team first take care of each other be there for each other and when you get into conflicts and you will get into conflicts don't have a mentality of whose fault was it being a mentality of okay what's the problem and how can we solve it later on when the dust settles you can talk about how you can do things better in the future also know that the best teams are not frictionless you need to have opposing ideas in order to be able to evolve but just remember this in every debate the best idea has to win put your ego to the side the best idea has to win every single time uh, these are the eight things that I feel are the most important. I would love to hear what you think, think are some important uh, skills for IT consultants. Please write them in the comments down below. Make sure to share this. Uh, if you aren't subscribed to the Business Bits channel, please do that. And also follow me on LinkedIn because that's where all the business happens. See you guys. Bye bye.